It has been a minute since we've expanded on the DW storyline. It started back when we checked out a DW Collector's Maple Kit, and then we checked out a DW Design Series Acrylic. Then I went on a little side quest and talked to some of the people at DW in person, but now we have the latest and greatest in e-drum technology, the DWE which is essentially a wireless electronic drum set and the form factor of an acoustic kit. Now, when I opened up the collector's maple, Bryce was with us and we had a small little side bet on the shape of a cymbal and somehow he nailed it perfectly, which I still don't understand how he did that. But unfortunately, he can't be here today. He's busy with some Christmas production thing, but he came by yesterday to borrow a bunch of drums. So we have a little side bet on the wrap or the finish of this kit because I have no idea what color this kit is, what wrap, what finish is on this kit. They kind of just sent it to me. I'm locked in with Silver Sparkle, mainly because 65 Drums got a DWE kit and his was Silver Sparkle, so that might be cheating. And tobacco to black fade. I've seen a couple pictures of them. I've done like zero research on it, but yeah. Do you want to know my, my guesses? What is your guess? See that snare drum there? and this kit right here and your kit at church <laughs> you think it's gonna be uh what do they call it? pale blue oyster <laughs> no i don't think so but watch it be this finish it'll be holy i'll let you clean that up anyways um thanks for the drums if i didn't mention a dinner is on the line just like last time more boxes Ooh, he's got some weight behind him Oh, we're both wrong. So we got some acoustic heads, but the drum has mesh heads on it, or yeah, just the uh, the batter side. Dang, look at that thing in there. So that was the 10. This is probably the 12, 12 by nine from the looks of it. Some goodies we'll get to later. Floor Tom legs. The Floor Tom. You know, I didn't think to check. Did they include the timbre note on the inside of these? No, they didn't, but the shell is made from hard rock maple with the 333 grain orientation for optimum acoustic performance and integrated wireless trigger technology, which allows unlimited electronic versatility. Oh, that was the end of the sentence. I think this is a 20. Maybe not. I think it's actually 22. It even comes with the uh, acoustic pillow. Whoa, look at this head. That is insane. Now this box, I think has all the, uh, the special goods inside of it. Oh, the, the symbols. I don't know what I was thinking. Whoa, <laughs> look at this. That's crazy. Yep, sounds like nothing. We got two 16s. Is there a third? No, there's not. This is an 18. So that must mean that these are the hi-hats. Not entirely sure how this works. If I had to guess, that's the bottom. These are pretty snazzy looking symbols. They're made of some sort of metal. There's a separate bell, which is isolated from this little pad of rubber. Then we flip it over, this is all plastic and is probably covering all the stuff that makes the magic happen. And the only real difference with the hi-hat is the mount is different. I'm guessing this is for some type of clutch. And there's also this little tab on the bottom, which I'm assuming is for it being opened or closed. And now finally, we can dive into these two little boxes. Got all of the cymbal wing nuts as well as the hi-hat clutch and whatever that thing is. Looks like a headphone amp, the wireless receiver some USB adapters, USB-C cable, looks like MIDI to eighth inch, and another USB-C. Now we got this box, this looks familiar. Dang, look at that sticker. And really the only thing else in there were the spare tension rods, a bunch of drum keys, and this little bass drum hoop protector. Now you're probably wondering, where's the snare drum? 
it's coming. I assumed it was in those other boxes, but it's on the way. That's all that matters. So while we wait, let's take a closer look at these shells. It's got a 10 by 8 and 12 by 9 rack tom, 16 by 14 floor tom, and a 22 by 16 inch bass drum. And this wrap is white marine pearl. Quick look at the badge, nothing too crazy, nice and simple. They also kind of snazzed up this logo with that little border. Usually it's just solid, like this. Does it have the mega fine thread tension rods? No, it doesn't. And now I'm not the hippest when it comes to everything DW, but I'm pretty sure that this hardware is similar to what you'll find on a performance series. So here's a collector's, the DWE, and then a design series. So you can see the large lugs on the collectors, the medium lugs on the E, and then the small lugs on the acrylic, just uh, as a comparison. On the batter, we got, whoa, it's lighting up. Is that supposed to do that? <laughs> it's got mesh heads on it, which are legit mesh heads. Roland was the first to design and patent mesh heads. The mesh head on the bass drum is a bit more uh, crazy looking. The weaving and stitching is more uh, coarse, I guess is the right word. If I had to guess, a regular mesh head was too floppy, so they had to beef it up some. And then all of the rezzo heads are plain old regular drum heads. And I'm sure if you wanted the kit to be a little bit more quiet, you could switch out the rezzo heads with mesh heads. Now let's do a quick weight comparison because the E does have all of uh, the goodness inside of it. Collector's maple, seven pounds, and we'll round that up to five ounces. And now the E, eight pounds, and we'll say four ounces. So the E is definitely heavier. Now again, this is a loner kit, so a few people have had this before me, but I'm gonna be that guy and fix one little thing. Fixed. You can even mute the drums with your hand. I had no idea. I kind of just did that out of instinct. And the snare finally decided to join the club. She's a 10 lugger, 14 by six and a half. The snare side has a mesh head unlike the other drums. It's also a Remo head compared to a Roland head. It does come with the, the analog drum heads if you want to go acoustic mode as well as snare wires. And it's kind of hard to see, but there are snare bits cut into the shell. It has a three position butt plate for when you go acoustic, as well as a mag throw off and see that little button? It even works in E mode. At this point, you've probably realized that there's multiple playing zones on the drums and that you can make a lot of the sounds you can make on an acoustic kit with this kit. And one of those sounds is a cross stick. And the way it works is the head senses the pressure of your hand on the head. So I think we can cheat this a little bit. The only issue with that is watch how I play cross sticks.
Most of the time, my hand is coming off of the head with the stick. Maybe that's just bad technique, but for me, that just feels natural. So having to keep pressure on your palm while lifting the stick is very uh, unnatural to me. Now a quick price breakdown. Y'all were saying in the comments before that you're tired of seeing the dinky little three to four hundred dollar e kits. So this configuration is currently going for eight thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars before tax, which makes this the most expensive drum set I've had in the studio. And as a side note, you can get this exact same setup but in a curly maple burst finish for an extra two grand. But the nine grand price tag gets you everything I showed in the video so far. Plus you get a download to the software you need for this kit. And also it does come with a 5,000 series hardware pack. So you get all the stands and mounts and pedals. And one nice thing about the hardware pack is you get a bunch of extra drum keys. Bonus drum key on the pedal. Another bonus key with the snare stand. Another bonus key in the regular boom stand. Another bonus key with the hi-hat stand and a holder for it and another sticker not gonna lie i might steal this one this is my first time really using dw hardware it's a little bit bulkier than i'm used to but so far it feels pretty solid what in the drum hardware engineering degree is this well, let's tighten this up with one of the 12 drum keys we got this is also convenient they send a short rod and a long rod gonna go with the long one definitely not trying to overcompensate for anything Now setting up the kit is pretty simple and just like any other kit, but the symbols are a little bit different. They use these rubber felts along with this different style wing nut. And then the hi-hat stand comes with two different down tubes, one for a regular hi-hat and then a different one for the E. So the bottom symbol goes on and then this piece screws in to lock it in. And for the top symbol, there's a special clutch that just slides into place. And then these two nuts lock it in place. I feel like the symbols are the weakest link on this kit, not in the sense that they're gonna break or fall apart, but they just feel very unnatural. They're really heavy. They have like zero flex or give to them. And I'm sure you all have whacked the wing nut by accident before while playing. That's what these symbols feel like. It's a very unsettling feeling. And nine grand sounds really expensive because it is really expensive. But if we look at just the drums with all of the electronic components inside of them, they're only about $1,000 more than a collector's maple in the same sizes. So yes, you could argue that you're getting an electronic kit and an acoustic kit for about the same price of a comparable acoustic kit, but you kind of need these symbols for the electronic element of things because they're wireless and those cost like another $2,000. Uh, hey there, bud. You also have to factor in the price of acoustic cymbals. Didn't think about that, did you? Not gonna lie, I don't even know how to compare the price of this kit to other kits because this is the only one that exists that has the features and functions that it has, so, uh, yeah. And on top of all that, you'll need a computer to run the software, or you can also connect the receiver to certain standalone modules and not need a computer. 
So either way, you'll need to factor in the price of a computer or a module if you don't already have one. And if it wasn't clear before, this is nothing like the cheaper e-kits I've had on the channel before and isn't something I would recommend to someone just starting out. This kit is a major investment. But speaking of the software, setting up the kit is really simple. All you do is plug in the receiver and interface, pair the drums, and do some calibrations by hitting them. Also, I needed to update the firmware on the pads, which took no time at all, so by no means was the initial setup a big headache. That was a lot easier than I expected. Learning new software and setting up new software always gives me major anxiety. And now, a little side note with the, uh, the interface. There's USB-C for the computer, obviously, an eighth inch input for like jamming to music, I guess, a headphone output, and then a left and right stereo output. Which means if you're using this interface in a live setting, you only have a left and right output to send to the front of house. So that was the DWE control software, then there's the DW Soundworks software, which can be used standalone or as a virtual instrument to record with, and this is where you control all the sounds, you can pick out your kit, you can design your own kits, and change things around to how you like them. Alright, let's check out this Maple Mahogany Natural. We also got the Maple Mahogany Studio. So basically the same kit, because it is the same kit, just a different level of ambience, I guess. Let's try the 50th anniversary natural. Now the kick is a little bit quiet on this kit. So if we go over here, we can bump that up a little bit. Pure Almond Natural. I like that snare. Got a Gretsch kit. Uh, Slingerland. There's a sizzle on the ride. Let's try this roomy spruce. Very pillowy toms. All right, I really like the pure almond natural, or was it metal? Did we do metal? Let's try metal. All right, so the kit wasn't fully loaded, so I don't know if you heard that weirdness in the kick, but I think that's why. So make sure the kit is loaded before you play it. Let's kind of customize this kit so we can go to the rack tom. Let's tune it up a bit. Same with that. Floor time, you already know. <laughs> that might be too low. Kick, uh... Bring that up. Get some more click out of it, a little bit more tack. Which also, you can EQ everything. You can add a compressor, uh, a saturator, reverb, uh, a bunch of other stuff. You can also change the ambience, the uh, amount of overhead mics. 
in that direct sound uh, snare. I actually really like the snare. Dang, that's tuned all the way down almost. Let's bring it up. Yeah, more. So that was just tuning the drums. If we go to the kit designer, you can also change the drums. So this is the Pure Almond, obviously. But let's go, ooh, true cast snares. We definitely need the Bell Browns. I honestly don't like that snare. Let's go back to the Almond. So now from here, we can also change the cymbals. So we got some 14 inch uh, Mono Classics Custom Duels. Uh, what else we got? Some Sabians, some Zildjians. Uh, let's try these. 15-inch K-Suites. A 19. Let's try this. Ooh. A little trashier. I like that. Peisty. Those go well together. And now the second crash. We need something like a China 21 inch hybrid K Custom. Byzance Jazz China. Yeah! You know what? Let's tune these hi hats so they sound a little bit more like 16s maybe. So there was a very surface level look at the software because there's a lot more that you can do with it. Also, if you click up here, there's a list of all of the presets and you can tell that DW didn't skimp out on these samples because there's a ton of different kits and snares and cymbals and they use a bunch of different really expensive mics. But now, what about going acoustic? Up inside, we can see the trigger mechanism, so we gotta remove that. So there's one, two, and three, and this can come out. Unrelated, but here's a closer look at the mesh head. It has a uh, plastic hoop, and this is actually a two-ply head. But since we're getting rid of that head, we now need our acoustic head. Then the rim can go back on. Then just repeat that process on all of the other drums. And for the cymbals, we just take off this wing nut and felt, remove the cymbal, put on your normal felt, add the cymbal, and then the top felt and wing nut. The hi-hat is a little bit more involved, so we take off the top cymbal. We also get rid of this and throw on this one, which is made for a regular cymbal. And also worth noting, you only get one memory lock. I actually didn't have it on the, the E version. It does come with a regular clutch for a regular set of hi-hats, so that's kind of nice because you can just leave the clutch on the, uh, the E symbol, even though this wouldn't work for a regular symbol. And that's the hi-hat stand. So really, it's not that difficult to convert it to an acoustic kit. It just takes a good amount of time. But maybe that's why they include seven drum keys. Just get six friends and give them a key and you'll be done in no time. And then another little thing to keep note of is once you go back into E mode, you'll have to calibrate everything again, which takes no time. And for that matter, anytime you change the tuning of a drum, you should recalibrate it. Oh, and just like that, we're back to E mode. But on top of everything I showed in this video, there are four main questions I had about this kit and spending some time with it really helped me answer those questions, except for one of them, which is, is this something you would see yourself playing and owning? Because if it is, there's a link in the description where you can go buy one. But now my real questions. Latency. I had zero issues at all with latency, which is still crazy to think that all this information is getting sent to this little box wirelessly and then into your computer and out into your headphones with basically zero latency and sound. The feel. 
The mesh heads kind of surprised me because I didn't realize that the toms were two ply heads and then the kick and snare are three ply heads. And then of course the kick has that thick single weave on it. So the rebound was a lot more natural than I was expecting. The only kind of weird feeling I got was when you're playing more busy stuff around the drums and you're moving around more, you can really feel how how slick the mesh heads are. It's kind of hard to explain and show, but you definitely feel it. And then of course the cymbals felt not that good. I will say that the more I played them, the more I got used to them, but I guarantee as soon as I go back to regular cymbals, these will feel like garbage. Bugginess. The hi-hats I calibrated like four or five times, but still I got some like weird sounds when opening or closing them. And also I realized if I had my foot down on the pedal for a long time and then let off of it, occasionally that would make a sound too. For the most part, choking the cymbals I had no issues with, but occasionally I'll go to choke it and it wouldn't choke, but if I move my hand over like a quarter inch, then it would choke. So by no means is the kit perfect, but I gotta say for DW's first shot at such an ambitious project, they did a pretty solid job and I think it's only a matter of time before this technology is perfected and also is more affordable. So drop a comment with your thoughts. I have some videos about some other e-kits as well as some videos about some other DW kits if you want to check those out because right now I got to pack this thing up and send it back to DW.